Lesson 12 homework. Number 1. Subtract. 3 and 1 fourth minus 2 and 1 third. So the first thing we need to do is find our common denominator. And we're going to do that by listing the multiples of 3 and 4 until we find the first one that they have in common. So I see 12 is their least common multiple. And what I'm going to do now is make 1 fourth and 1 third into twelfths. So if we have 3 and 1 fourth, I need to make that into twelfths, so I'm going to multiply it by 3 thirds, and we'll get 3 and 3 twelfths, because 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 3 is 3. And if I do 2 and 1 third, I need to multiply that by 3 to get 12, I need to multiply it by fourths. So we'll get 2 and 4 twelfths. So now that we have a common denominator, what we're subtracting is 3 and 3 twelfths minus 2 and 4 twelfths. Now, this is where it gets a little trickier because when we go to subtract, we'll start with the um, fractions, and 3 twelfths minus 4 twelfths, we can't do that. We can do that, that's negative 1 twelfth, but we're not getting into negatives right now. So what we need to do is just like we would do at any other time, when we would have like a um, subtraction problem where it's like 27 minus 29. We can't do 7 minus 9, so we borrow. So the, we're going to do the exact same thing here, and I'm going to borrow from the 3 make it a 2. Now, since I borrowed and made that a 2, I have one whole. But I'm going to use my one whole in the form of twelfths because that's what I'm working with. So one whole is equal to 12 twelfths. I'm going to use those 12 twelfths and add it back in there. So I now have 2 and 3 twelfths plus the 12 twelfths, 15 twelfths minus 2 and 4 twelfths. Now that I can subtract. So 15 twelfths minus 4 twelfths is 11 twelfths, and 2 minus 2 is nothing, so 11 twelfths. All right, 3 and 2 thirds minus 3, 2 and 3 fourths. We did the common denominators over here, so we know it's going to be 12. I'm going to go ahead and make 3 and 2 thirds into twelfths. I chose 4 because 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. So we have 3 and 8 twelfths. And then if I do 2 and 3 fourths, 4 times 3 is 8. So I'm going to use 3 thirds. And we'll have 2 and 9 twelfths. So we have 3 and 8 twelfths minus 2 and 9 twelfths. Now when I go to subtract, I can't do 8 twelfths minus 9 twelfths. So I'm going to borrow from the 3, make that a 2, and add 1 whole or 12 twelfths into the 8 twelfths. So 8 twelfths plus 12 twelfths would give me 20 twelfths. So I'll have 2 and 20 twelfths minus 2 and 9 twelfths. And that would give me 11 twelfths, because 2 minus 2 is also nothing. 6 and 1 fifth minus 4 and 1 fourth. So let's find our common denominator for 5 and 4. I see 20 is going to be our common denominator. Oops. So I need to multiply that by, I'm trying to get to 20, so I'm going to multiply the denominator by 4. So I'll have 6 and 4 twentieths. And then 4 and 1 fourth, I need to multiply that by 5 fifths to get my denominator of 20. We'll have 6 and 4 twentieths 
minus 6 and 5 twentieths. Now I can't do, oops, sorry, that's not 6, it's 5. It's not 5 either, it's 4. All right, 4 and 5 twentieths. Now we can't do 4 twentieths minus 5 twentieths, so I'm going to borrow. Make that a 5. Since we're working with 20ths, I took a whole. I'm going to add 20 20ths into here. So I'll have 5 and 24 20ths minus 4 and 5 20ths. If I do 24 20ths minus 5 20ths, I get 19 20ths. And our whole numbers, 5 minus 4, is 1. So we have 1 and 19 20ths. 6 and 3 fifths minus 4 and 3 fourths. So just like over here, we already found our common denominator is 20. So 6 and 3 fifths, making that into 20ths, I'd have to multiply by 4, 4 fourths. And then 4 and 3 fourths, 4 times 5 is 20. So we have 6 and 12 twentieths minus 4 and 15 twentieths. Again, we can't do 12 minus 15, so I'm borrowing 5, and I'm going to add 20 twentieths to 12 twentieths. So I'll have 5 and 32 twentieths minus 4 and 15 twentieths. Now I can subtract 32 twentieths from 15 twentieths. That will give me 17 twentieths. And 5 minus 4 is 1, so we have 1 and 17 twentieths. E, 5 and 2 sevenths minus 4 and 1 third. So let's find our common denominator. Still haven't seen it, so I'm going to keep going. And I'll use 21. So I need to make 5 and 2 sevenths into 21st. And 7 times 3 is 21, so a 5 and 6 21sts, and then 4 and 1 third. I need to multiply that by 7 7 to get 21. Okay, we can't do 6 21sts minus 7 21sts. I'm going to borrow. That becomes 4, and I need to add 21 21st plus 6 21st. So I'll have 27 21st. And 27 21st minus 7 21st will be 20 21st. Not 20 20th, 20 21st. And 4 minus 4 is nothing. So 20 21st. Okay, over here, same common denominator, 21. Need to multiply it by 7 to get 21st. And 7 times 3 is 21. So we have 8 and 14 21st minus 3 and 15 21st. So I'm going to need to borrow. That becomes 7. And I add 21 21st to 14 21st. So I'll have 7 and 21 plus 14. I'll just do, work that out to make sure we get it correct. 35 21st minus 3 and 15 21st. So 35 21st minus 15 21st is 20 21st, and 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 and 20 21st. G, 18 and 3 fourths minus 5 and 7 eighths. So we have 4 and 8. And I already see we can use 8 as our common denominator. So I need to make 18 and 3 fourths into eighths. So 2 times 4 is 8. So we have 18 and 6 eighths. 
And then 5 and 7 eighths, that's already an eighth, so we don't need to do anything with that. But I am going to need to borrow because I can't do 6 minus 7. So I'm going to change that to 16 and add in 8 eighths to the 6 eighths. So 17 and 14 eighths minus 5 and 7 eighths. 14 eighths minus 7 eighths is 7 eighths. And 17 minus 5 is 12. So we have 12 and 7 eighths. H5. Our denominators are 5 and 8, so let's find a common denominator. I don't see one yet, so I'm going to keep going. And 40. So 17 and 1 fifth, I need to make that into 40, so 5 times 8 is 40. Two and five eighths. Need to make that into 40, so times five. Okay. So we can't do 8 fortieths minus 25 fortieths. I'm going to borrow, make that 16, and I need to add 40 fortieths to 8 fortieths. So we'll have 48 fortieths. And 48 fortieths minus 25. 48 minus 25 would give us 23 fortieths. And 16 minus 2 is 14. So we have 14 and 23 fortieths. Number 2, Tony wrote the following. 7 and 1 fourth minus 3 and 3 fourths equals 4 and 1 fourth minus 3 fourths. Is Tony correct? Draw a number line to support your answer. So let's see. Draw a number line. And I'll start at 7 and 1 fourth here, and I'll subtract 3. I'll break them all into fourths. So minus 1, 2, 3. And then I need to subtract three more fourths. One, two, three, right there. So it's equal to three and a half. And four and one fourth. I'll use a different color. So if we start at four and one fourth here and subtract three fourths, one, two, three, we also get to three and one half. So it, yes, he is correct. Number three, Miss Sanger blended eight and three-fourths gallons of iced tea with some lemonade for a picnic. If there were 13 and two-fifths gallons of the beverage, how many gallons of lemonade did she use? So she blended eight and three-fourths gallon of iced tea with lemonade, and there were 13 and two-fifths total. So we want to know how much lemonade she used. So basically, this is the whole thing. 13 and 2 fifths. She used 8 and 3 fourths for iced tea. And this is lemonade. But we don't know how much she used for lemonade. That's what we're going to figure out. So what we need to do is subtract 13 and 2 fifths minus 8 and 3 fourths. And so our common denominator for 5 and 4 is 20. You could list the multiples. So in order to make fifths into twentieths, I need to multiply by 4 fourths. And 
and 8 and 3 fourths. I need to make that into 20 is 4 times 5 is 20. So we'll have 8 and 15 20 ths. Now what I need to do is borrow because I can't do 8 20 ths minus 15 20 ths. So we have 12. I'm going to add 20 20 ths to 8 20 ths. So we have 12. 28 20 ths minus 8 and 15 20 ths. So 28 20 ths minus 15 20 ths is 13 20 ths, and 12 minus 8 is 4. So there's 4 and 13 20 ths gallon of lemonade. Number 4 A carpenter has 10 and a half feet of wooden plank. He cuts off four and a half feet to replace the slat of a deck and three and two thirds feet to repair a banister. He uses the rest of plank, rest of the plank to fix the stairs. How many feet of plank of wood does the carpenter use to fix the stair? So I'm going to draw a tape diagram. So this is the wooden plank. It's a total of ten and a half feet. He cuts off four and a fourth to replace the slat on the deck and three and two thirds to repair a banister uses the rest to fix the stairs. So how many feet of wood does the carpenter use to fix the stairs? So first what I'm going to do is add these two together. My common denominator for 4 and 3 is 12, so I need to make 4 and 1 fourth into 12ths. I'm going to do that by multiplying by 3, 3 thirds. Three times 4 is 12, so we have 4 and 3 twelfths minus 3 and 8 twelfths can't, oh, we're adding here, sorry. So 4 plus 3 is 7, and 3 twelfths plus 8 twelfths is 11 twelfths. So we have 7 and 11 twelfths equals this part right here. So this is 7 and 11 twelfths. To figure out what this is, we're going to need to subtract and do 10 and a half minus 7 and 11 twelfths. First we need to find a common denominator for 2 and 12. It's going to be 12. So I'm going to make 10 and a half and 2 twelfths. I need to multiply it by 6 6 to get 12. So we'll have 10 and 6 twelfths minus 7 and 11 twelfths. Now I need to borrow because I can't do 6 twelfths minus 11 twelfths. So that's going to become 9. And when I add 12 twelfths to 6 twelfths, I get 18 twelfths. So I have 9 and 18 twelfths minus 7 and 11 twelfths. 18 twelfths minus 11 twelfths is 7 twelfths. And 9 minus 7 is 2. So he needs 2 and 7 twelfths feet for the stairs.